I think that Chris Wood could score against Newcastle, celebrate, and still do so in a respectful way. Like, it doesn't have to be out of by or. I'm just suggesting that maybe you acknowledge the huge, huge moment of scoring a hat-trick away from home in the Premier League. Nottingham Forest really struggled for away victories. So the fact that he scored away from home, the Forest fans have committed loads of their time and money to get up there, enjoy the moment and celebrate. You don't have to do so in a disrespectful way, though. Rory, what about when Lampard scored against Chelsea? Should he have celebrated? That's a great point. That's a great point because... In this, you know how the, every rule has an exception, doesn't it? Every, for every rule, there can be an exception. And I think that Frank Lampard scoring against Chelsea when he didn't celebrate, that just about makes sense to me. I wouldn't have had a problem with him scoring, scoring and celebrating, by the way. But the way that Chelsea fans, I was in that way and it happened right in front of us, the way that Chelsea fans reacted that day was far worse than if Frank Lampard had celebrated. Some Chelsea fans around where I was sitting in the lower tier sort of clapped him, sort of almost half acknowledging the Lampard goal which was not ideal for us you know we were competing with City for the league that year Schurler had put us 1-0 up so it was a real disaster that he'd scored that goal so I don't really understand Chelsea fans acknowledging it but if Lampard had celebrated I wouldn't have minded but him not celebrating makes sense in the way that when we were exploring this this just between us Madge you know if Harry Kane ends up playing at Tottenham for Bayern Munich Mm -hmm. I could understand and acknowledge it being correct for him to not celebrate I think there are exceptions but Chris Wood at Newcastle was ludicrous absolutely ludicrous yeah there's no there's no real reason for him no he's acting like Alan Shearer wouldn't would potentially not celebrate against Newcastle that would make sense to me Chris Wood is not Alan Shearer Okay, so where here's the good p- question. Where's, where's the line? Where's the cutoff point? Is, <laughs> it, is it 100 games? Is it 200 games? Do you know? Do you know? I can remember. I can remember Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank scoring for Middlesbrough against Chelsea. I was at, I was at that game, and he didn't celebrate, and he got a round of applause from from everyone at Stamford Bridge. I think Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank was, you know, he's one of the best strikers to have played for Chelsea in the Premier Chelsea League. Chelsea legend. Yeah. He was, he was very unfortunate that his time in, at Chelsea, you know, I think he was there for four years, he was scoring goals left, right and centre, brilliant player. It just coincided with Arsenal being fantastic, Claudio Ranieri being Chelsea manager and not being able to get over the line, and Chelsea not winning any silverware. But he certainly won of Chelsea. Like, the partnership he had with Ida Johnson was, was like, sensational. So him not celebrating makes sense to me. But I'd say 95%. Levi Colwell scoring against Brighton and not celebrating, ludicrous. Chris Wood scoring a hat-trick for Forrest. Like when they when the season finishes, that could be one of their most important victories of the entire season. He scores a hat trick for Nottingham Forest away from home, secures the three points in a, a ground where nobody would have anticipated them getting anything, and he chooses to not celebrate. Well, we've got a couple of callers on oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Let's head over first to Sean, who's a Celtic fan, who joins us on the show. Good afternoon, Sean. Good afternoon, boys. How you doing? Okay. Yeah, Hello, very Sean. good, Sean. Uh, talk yeah, to me. Celebrating you, against well. former clubs. How, how yeah. do you feel about it? I think it depends. I think it's how you. I think how you left the club as well. I think that you know, if you left the club on like bad terms, I would say, you know, yeah, go for it. But then if you've left on good terms, I think that, for example, like Larson, Henrik Larson scored against us for Barcelona. He put the ball in the back of the net, and it was good uh, strike as well. Good. I think he dinked the keeper though, and he just turned around. His expression on his face was just like. Nothing. It was just like you just scored it and went back to the centre spot. And I just think that it depends, doesn't it, how you've see that makes sense to me as well, though, Sean. I think that like like Henrik Larsson adopting that that approach makes total sense. You know, he's one of the best strikers to have ever led the line for Celtic, a a true icon. And him choosing to not celebrate makes sense. But for every example, for every Frank Lampard against Chelsea or Henrik Larsson against Celtic, for every example like that, I feel like there's I feel like there's a hundred players who choose to not celebrate in some yeah. faux demonstration of respect or class that yeah. is totally unnecessary. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And like I said I just think that if you've left the club as well, like, you know, if you didn't get on with the manager or is left you out of the club uh, sorry, out of the team, I think that then I think you've got a point to prove and I think that then you can celebrate and, and enjoy it, I think. But even then I think sometimes they don't. Like I'd say mm. I'd say a lot of the time when players leave clubs, it's not always on their own terms. Even if they leave in a yeah, yeah. in a positive way, I just I just don't get it. Would it bother you? That's say say Henrik Larsson had had scored and celebrated. Would it have, would it change the way you feel about Larsson now? No, because he's an icon, isn't he? He's, he's exactly. That's why again. Like that's it. why I don't understand why why it's so. Well, I don't I don't think he would though. I don't think he would. Celebrate because he loved the club and uh, the people and the band and everything. I, I, I don't think he would do that as a person. I don't think he would. 
No. Well, well, he didn't. He didn't. And fair play to him because he is he is a Celtic icon. Thank you, Sean. Let's head over to a Newcastle fan because we're talking about a former Newcastle player. Alan joins us on the show. Good afternoon, Alan. Hello, guys. How's it going? Hope you've had a nice Christmas. Same um, to you, my friend. You. Merry Christmas. Was, was you at the game by any chance, Alan? I was at the game, and I'll tell you what it is. Before the game, Chris Wood was he was roundly applauded. He was getting autographs. He was, he was signing autographs. He was he was well re- he's well respected for what for what he did for Newcastle. He's one of the original three who came to Newcastle when we were staring relegation in the face. Him and Bruno and uh, Trippier. So they 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 they're not. He's not an Alan Shearer, but he'll always be remembered for what he did. Would it have mattered if he had celebrated? He's like you. Obviously, you know, you're 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 a football fan who's going going to Newcastle. You understand the significance of the hat trick. You understand what it would mean to him if he were to celebrate. Would you see that as some sort of slight or disrespect? I, I wouldn't have took it as a disrespect. It, maybe it's a muted celebration. Uh, if he had a run to the Gallagher there and screamed and shouting, but remember he left Newcastle on good terms. It was a good deal for both clubs, you know, mm. for him and the two clubs. But he. He, uh, he he got roundly applauded when he came off the pitch. While uh, Amanda Stavely, she she went and spoke to him in the in the uh, in the tunnel after the game. He's well respected in Newcastle. He doesn't have to he doesn't have to stick it up with when he when he scores a hat trick. He he will remember that for the rest of his life. He he have his shirt. He have the ball signed by both sets of players. And that would be I mean he'll be, he'll have uh, celebrated in his own way. But he he had he didn't have to go to the Leeds then or the Gal again and, and scream at the fans because all he would have getting is applause back because he he is a good player and and he is a good person. Do you know do you know Alan? So, this yeah. one's quite true because of course I do Sundays with Alan Pardew, a former manager of yours. And Mm -hmm. Pards has a great relationship with the Newcastle fans. And you know what? We've had a lot of Newcastle fans call up and say, you know what, Pards, we had so many difficult years under that Mm -hmm. spell. But when when we got to Mm -hmm. fifth with Pardew, it was a great season for them. And and Pardew has the same respect. There seems to be something, Rory, with Newcastle fans, especially and ex-players. Is there a special relationship with the Toon Army and the players then, Alan? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see, with Pardew, he took with the fifth, right? And then he wanted he wanted to take it to the next level, the next season. But he didn't. He wasn't going to get the backing off Ashley yeah. and the fans. And I mean, the fans knew that. And I mean, was well respected as well. Alan Pardew. I've spoken to him myself when he's been back to St James's Park. Great guy. And and getting back to Chris Wood, he's a great guy. And sometimes a great guy is is just as good as a great player. Very true, Alan. Thank you. Great call there. Um, Talking about, of course, leading into the game there, he's signing autographs, he's mm. been clapped by the fans. He's been shown a lot of respect by the Newcastle fans, and maybe in his mind he feels he's disrespecting them. Say say he had say he had scored that hat trick and celebrated. The next time he goes to St James's Park, do you think there's a different approach to him? Do you think there's a different feeling around Probably him? Probably not. Exactly. I like this one. Van Persie against Arsenal, he didn't celebrate and the fans still booed him. Yeah, he should have. He, he missed his opportunity, didn't he? Like he's, he's persona non grata at the Emirates now. Like They really don't like him. They've really got an issue with him. And he's missed his moment. Sorry, guys, boo. Yeah, I, also, I like, I like the back and forth. Have you seen like one of, the, one of the most brilliant rivalries between players and fans at the moment? It's Emmy Martinez. Have you seen the re- reaction from Arsenal fans to Emmy Martinez? Like They really don't like him. It's become quite Why? impassioned. I, th- I think when he, he was left, a bench warmer. He, when he left, I think they they bid him farewell and wished him well. And I think Emmy Martin has had a lot to say about Arsenal and because he didn't get a him, chance. And he's and he's flagged that and he's not been particularly supportive of Arsenal ever since. And there is a real back and forth. So when Emmy Martinez demonstrates that kind of cushioned header, do you remember last year when Jorginho hit the yeah. bar? Emmy Martinez cushioned header into the back of the net. The Arsenal fans loved that. Give it a big and love, you know. And then equally this year, when Villa beat Arsenal. Emmy Martinez is over at the uh, over at the away end having a look, making sure that they know. And it's a back and forth. And football is that. Football is tribal. Football should be full of rivalry. And I've got no issue with it, with either from the fans to the player or the player to the fans. Uh, Andrew Everton fan on the Wirral said Richarlison did the perfect balance last weekend. Uh, well, last week, sorry. Celebrated, but then shown a sign of respect and class at the end of the game. Then made a statement after the game. He will always be loved by Everton fans. Our producer, Ross, is an Everton fan. He loves Richarlison as well. And I suppose, you know, Richarlison and Everton, they had a real moment together with mm. staying up. I think when you go through something, like, as as Alan, the Newcastle fan, 
when you're staring at relegation and you're a player that's made an impact at a club, mm. I think the, there's a, there's a special connection, possibly. Yeah, I think so. I think I think that that's a, a bond that that probably lasts forever, yeah. and it would probably be very difficult for that to break. But again. What Richarlison did, you know, Richarlison combined with Pickford, I think were the two reasons that they ended up staying up that year. Yeah. I don't think it would undermine it. If Richarlison, who's struggled for goals at Tottenham, if he were to score and celebrate with his own fans, I'm not talking about running up to the Evertonians and giving, them, giving it the big in front yeah. of them. I'm just talking about celebrating with his own fans and acknowledging the contribution that he has made to his own team. I don't think many Evertonians would get the hunt with it. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.